All right, what's going on, guys? Now, ever since February, we've been talking about Elden Ring at so much of a length that when it comes to commentary on the game as a whole, I feel like we're in that weird period where people are just making stuff up to try to have some kind of unique perspective. But when you put it under a microscope and kind of take it for what it is, it just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And it's times like these where we get gems like this article. Elden Ring's Melania embodies from software's problems with women. With the subtitle, the game strongest boss betrays the developer's biggest weakness. Now, when I first saw this article, I wasn't actually planning on covering it. I kind of just laughed it off like, yeah, that's definitely not true. But then I started thinking about it more. And I do think it opens up a pathway to an interesting conversation. And I know a lot of people have been dunking on the idea. But as you guys know that I've been around on the channel for a while, whenever we cover articles like these, I want to at least give them the benefit of the doubt. But that being said, let's go ahead and dive into it today and find out if From Software really hates women. The article starts off by describing the encounter with Melania that we all know if we played the game. However, the final sentence stands out. But instead of becoming an uncontested favorite, she frustrated fans and revealed the limitations of From Software's imagination. So what are these limitations in From Software's imagination? Let's keep reading and find out. Melania is a hard as nails in-game encounter, and while optional, she is a brick wall for a lot of players, reminiscent of other difficult encounters like Lady Maria from Bloodborne. It's a two-phase fight full of fast, lethal strikes as Melania heals from damage she's dealt to the player. There's a deep humor in the idea of a woman whose very attacks steal health from you to empower herself. Yeah, I didn't add that last line in, but that's kind of the attitude of this whole article, and kind of paints the picture of the lens they're viewing the game from, and you'll see that as we keep going, but they're trying to find something to be upset about. Like, nobody is going to be playing Elden Ring and get hit by Melania and notice that she gets her health back and think, oh, that's a perfect allegory for women. Yeah, you might find that in some memes on Reddit, but I don't think From Software is so afflicted by misogyny that they purposefully try to get the player to hate Melania because she's a woman. And you'll see exactly how that point doesn't hold up later on in the article, but before we keep going, I want to say I understand the argument here. I really do see the point they're trying to make. I just think it's entirely misguided, and I'll explain in a minute. Melania exemplifies the way From Software writes women in its games. Whether bosses or NPCs you meet in the wild, these women have a shared condition. They exist in tragically declined worlds, sharing a specific brokenness, disfigurement, abandonment, and loss. They are afflicted by gender and the cure for when they are obstacles instead of mutely helpful is for the player to enact succinct violence. It is a particular kind of idealized femininity, as fantastical as the foreboding castles and giant trees, demure, quiet, void of needs or motivations, an echoed presence of dolls, mothers, and even helpmeets who guide the player along. Their emotions are muted in their more docile counterparts, before erupting into a shrieking, horrifying hysteria when encountered in combat. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but not a single attribute mentioned in that entire paragraph is exclusive to the women. I would go so far as to say literally every single character in these games has all of those, and that's because that's the entire theme of the worlds. Everything in the lands between, and even in the Dark Souls games, and Bloodborne for that matter, exists in a fractured, dark, and decrepit world. And also, in pretty much every one of those games, people are losing their memories. It's not because they're women, and they need to be oppressed and contained. They have these bleak, stoic personalities because that's what's required to survive in the world they inhabit, and we can see that echoed in nearly all of the characters. But let's keep reading. Melania is made up of this same stuff and isn't unanimously hated either. There's a passion for a giant red-haired woman in armor. Still, she is a contentious character subject to social media posts, memes, and arguments. It's obvious that there is a contingent of the audience antagonized by her presence as both a boss, even if optional, and a figure in the game's story. Now look, I'll give them this one. I did see kind of the Melania hate memes going around for a while, and some of them were absolutely vile. So that part of the community was very weird and unnecessary, but that's also just part of the internet as a whole. People are just weird on here, to the point where there's been times where I don't even want to make videos anymore because I've had to deal with some very strange people. But that's not indicative of the content that it's from, and I can guarantee you this kind of stuff was not going through the heads at From Software when they were writing these characters. Quite a few of these archetypal From Soft women are beloved by fans, but the broad the modern gaming community usually reacts harshly towards female characters, which makes the Soulsborne community's embrace of them feel positive on the surface. When that affection feels based on that empty, emotionless state or reduces them to infantilized waifus, you realize that hostility and that fondness spring from the same deep sexist roots, twins intertwined. I want them to look at what they just said right there. So you can't like the character, but you also can't hate the character or you're a sexist. But if you like them too much, then you're also a sexist. And look, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. 
I understand what they're trying to say here. They're trying to paint the picture that since they're alien and stoic, that's why you like the female character because they're not showing their true attributes of a woman. But that's just simply not true at all. The characters have deep emotions and stories, and it's the unraveling of those stories that causes the player to like that character. It's not deep-rooted sexism, it's just good writing. Yeah, that may be true for like 1% of the weirdos on the internet, but if you're a normal person who lives in the real world and you play this game, you're going to understand that this argument that they're trying to present has no legs to stand on. FromSoft's female characters who deviate from this quiet, doll-like appearance are still written with a lack of emotionality, which feels close to masculine stoicism. It's a strange emptiness that informs every permutation of these characters that women embody in these games. Like I explained earlier, they're like this because the world is harsh. And here's the crux of it all. They're written like this because they're written as humans first and women second. And we know that's true because every single character is like this. When faced with a difficult, defiant woman who has never been beaten, men cannot help but fantasize about being the one to take her down, or at least be in the room when it happens. And I think honestly, this might be the one line that completely discredits the entire article. Even if they were trying to make a scholarly argument, there's so many generalizations in this piece that it almost makes it impossible to argue against because yeah, there probably is one person out there like this. But I think the author just spends way too much time on Twitter because everything is so hyperbolized and they're taking the most extreme examples and casting it as the norm with absolutely no nuance in between. And the thing is, the main reason why people have frustrations against this character is because it's the hardest boss in the game. The mechanics are so frustratingly difficult that yeah, it's gonna cause some resentment, but not because of the fact that the character is a woman. I mean, seriously, it's a video game character. She's not real, and you can't use it as some kind of gauge for the real world. While FromSoft's games are often intriguing meditations on the corrupting influence of power, the inevitability of death, and the lurking dread of cosmic horror, the women in them feel stunted. Millennia is a half-grown idea clipped back too short. What could have been is left on the floor of the Halleck tree, cocooned in petals and deeply dreaming of revenge. Overall, I have to say, the points made in this article make absolutely no sense if you're somebody that actually played the game and paid attention to the story. Because you have characters like Ronnie, Melina, and Roderica that have such a broad spectrum of emotion and have mysterious ambitions, they're just a little bit difficult to decipher on the surface just like people are in real life. And I would think, if anything, that would be a good representation because their identities are not solely rooted to the fact of their gender. There's plenty of examples out there of terrible writing when it comes to women in games, and I think from software games are definitely not on that list. But I'm interested to see what else you guys think down in the comments below. That's about as far as I'm going to go into the points made in this article because I feel like if I keep going, it's going to go down a rabbit hole that I really don't want to. While I do understand the points they're trying to make in their argument, I think they're just trying way too hard to find issue with something that really isn't an issue, and they're leaving out the context of the game that they're in, not accounting for the reasons that the character would have to be that way that they are. Either way though guys, that's going to pretty much do it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like on it. Subscribe if you're new around here, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. But with that, I'll catch you in the next one.